said it. You just have to believe it. And that's it. Dr. Anthony L. Trice, dedicated to sound teaching, strong training, leadership, and development. Prayers are being answered and testimonies all around the world. Helping change one life at a time. Find out how to be a partner with Anthony Trice Ministerial Network. And thank you for tuning in for today's message. All right, and then read this to us at uh, 36 and 3 of Exodus. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it with all. And I'm reading from the King James Version, and of course you all, uh, your translation might read a little different. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And six, and Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. Seven says, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it and too much. When we begin to uh, uh, deal with giving in the church, whenever the Bible talks about tithing in the church, it always talks about a twofold, or it gives us a twofold meaning. Malachi says tithes and offerings. Amen. 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 So we see here that they brought it, they brought enough, but then too much. So tithes and offering is what causes the church to be in function and the church to grow. Amen. A lot of people are obedient. Well, I see a lot of people have uh, uh, come to elementary school and we are good with paying our tithes, but then we fail when we forbid to give an offering. Amen. And I just want to kind of throw this bullet point to uh, you know let you all in on how you would get a return in your giving. You don't get a return off of your tithes. How you just going to say that? Because tithes are for the church and for clergy. You look the definition of it. Tithes is so that the church would help be able to accommodate the people. Offering. The apostle teaches, he said, this contribution or this kind of giving is for the necessity or the want of the saints as well as God will cause everything that you have going on that you will abound in every good work. So if you just pay your tithes and you can come to the church and uh, enjoy the luxuries of what the church offers, then you got your return. that experience the too much. And God, watch it, God is uh, pleased with your tithes because of the glory you experience when you come into the church. But if you are still lacking when you leave the church, you have to make sure that your offering of God do Tithes and offerings. And tithe is, watch this you all, Tithe is a certain amount. Uh, Offering is where your heart is. Uh, I don't think that. I said a tithe is a certain amount. But watch this. If a tenth is a certain amount, then what kind of limit could you put on your offer? You apply your offering when the scripture said, give and it shall be given back unto you. You don't apply tithes with that. You don't give your tithes and, and try to apply the scripture. Uh -uh. The New Testament always talks about giving. 
So now we have this erroneous teaching now, this doctrine, it's a heresy doctrine now. Tithing ain't in the New Testament. <laughs> well, we, uh, I'm going to need a little help. What well, we at? Uh, I, I believe y'all, uh, let's do Matthew uh, 23 and 23, I believe. Where it says you pay, you pay tithe with Annas, Cumin. Amen. Amen. But you neglect the weight of your matters. Okay. If we there, I think I, I think I'm right there. That's what it says, though. I think I'm gonna get an eye turn one of them screens that when I start saying the scripture to pop up for me. <laughs> Scribes and Pharisees, uh -huh. hypocrites. Oh, who? who? Hypocrites. Hypocrite. Why are they hypocrites? For you pay tithe of so men. You do what? You pay tithe. Okay. How are you a hypocrite and you pay tithes? Keep on reading. You pay tithe of mint and anus uh -huh. and cumin, and uh -huh. have omitted the weightier matters uh -huh. of the law, uh -huh. judgment, mercy, and faith. Uh -huh. These are ye to have done. Uh -huh. Wait, 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 wait. These are to do what? You ought to pay your time. And this is the New Testament or Old Testament, Bishop, because sometimes, you know, I don't, they, they tell me, paying tithes ain't in the New Testament. How come it ain't? Come on now. Come on now. Come on. And if y'all really want to get technical, then Jesus said, I didn't even come to abolish the law. Yeah. But I came to do what? To fulfill the law. So why do we want to omit paying tithes? It's because, woe to you hypocrites. Fire! 
waiting 40 days with Israel. But they never engaged. We have, oh y'all, Lord. This is my pastor, he okay with it. We have a lot of the older church who set us up. But Saul could not engage in battle because he was not anointed for the battle. He was anointed to set the battle up. But then here comes King David who was anointed to engage. You can be anointed to set somebody up. Let us get back to what we own, y'all. Fighting in a rain. Exodus uh, uh, is the book of the departure. Or it's the book of coming out. Amen. So if we want to uh, uh, teach in the book of Exodus, I have to teach a message on coming out. Amen. They were coming out of bondage. Amen. And God always set it up to where in order for you to get it in the spirit, you have to first know how to understand or get it in the natural. Naturally so, uh, Egypt would represent bondage, sin, and the world if we would bring it current today. Amen. So God brought them out of bondage. They were in physical bondage, mental bondage, and spiritual bondage. Amen. Right? Amen. And once they came out of Egypt, God commanded Moses to build a sanctuary. There was no people in the desert for them to reach out to to help them build the sanctuary. So the material to build the sanctuary, y'all got to hear me. Hear me well. The material to build the temple had to come from within. But they could not build the temple when they were in bondage. They were slaves. So if Egypt, and I feel the Holy Ghost up with that. If Egypt represents the world, then the world can't build the church. Come on now. Well, that's why worldly folk don't know how to build the church. We can't expect the world to build the church. Because they in bondage. you are. God was showing the leader that if I called you to lead the people and command you to build me a sanctuary, then I'll supply more than enough of what you need to do the work. Exodus 12 and 35, it says, and the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, and jewels of gold and raiment. And 36, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. Amen. Watch this, you all. God made the Egyptians pay them for all the years of hard labor. Come on now. If the Bible say who the sun sets free is free indeed, then that's twofold that indeed. Indeed can be interpreted as for sure. He, he, he delivered you for sure. But deed also means work. God delivered you, oh, y'all don't want to pray. God delivered you for sure so that you could work. God never called nobody and didn't, did not expect them to work. Even when he called, watch this. But working in God, it really ain't hard labor. Adam was expected to keep dressed. Y'all know the 
scripture. He was expected to work, but it wasn't by the sweat of his bra until he seen it. So if you in the church and you find it's hard to work, it's because you've seen it. Come on. Oh, Lord. 
It's because God had uh, reconciled, or what's the word, redeemed you. When you got saved, watch this, you entered into God's debt. Because, watch this, y'all. Come on now. You didn't have the kind of stuff it takes to buy your salvation. He said that we were carnal and sold under sin. So if we would act like the parking lot was a big supermarket. And they say, I walk in there and I didn't know where the aisles was. Y'all know they put the inscriptions, what the different things is, produce, whatever. If I was to walk into a spiritual uh, uh, store, a spiritual supermarket, and I asked them, where is sinners sold in? folks sold it. You see that ad where it says see in it? They sold it to see it going down there. And when you get up there, they doing an auction. Sold to the highest bid. How much is it? It don't have a price on it. It don't have a price. It's price.
financial breakthrough and I want you to experience that same anointing that's on this ministry in your life by partnering with me here at Anthony Trice Ministry. You can go to my website at anthonytrice.org and become a monthly partner. God bless you. Hi, I'm Dr. Anthony L. Trice. I'm the senior pastor of Covenant for Life Christian Center Church in St. Louis. I have some exciting news. I just finished my new book, Integrity, the Missing Ingredient. This is a life-changing book. This is a book about the story of Job. Job chapter 1 talks about how Job was upright. That means he was a man that can be trusted. He was a man of integrity. I discovered when God can trust you, he'll give you the world. And Job showed in Job chapter 1 how prosperous Job was because God was able to trust Job because Job was a man of integrity. So go to my website and order my new book, Integrity, the Missing Ingredient, at anthonytrice.org or you can go to lifeway.org. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in St. Louis area, please come visit Covenant for Life Christian Center at 7200 West Florissant, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. Or give us a call at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at anthonytrice.org. And we thank you for your continued support.